This video user's guide shows how to record your iPhone or iPad display using Reflector 3's mirror and record functions. We'll give complete descriptions for all functions. We're using an iPhone 11 with iOS 14.0.1 and iPad 2 with iOS 9.3.6. The steps may change for other devices or other iOS versions. The quick start video shown below shows only basic settings for Reflector 3 with brief descriptions. There are clickable links to playlists iPhone and iPad at the end of this video and each playlist contains both videos and there are links in the video description. Start Reflector 3 on the PC. Here are all the settings for Reflector 3 with my recommendations. Settings are remembered, so you only need to set them the first time you use Reflector 3. We're using the iPhone 11 mirror display to show the effect of the settings. The effects are exactly the same on the iPad 2 display. Open Reflector 3, click the settings gear wheel, click preferences. Anytime you make a change on the screen, you need to click either Apply or OK. If you click Apply, it'll make the change and stay on the screen. If you click OK, it will make the change and close this window. On the general setting, check Use System Name. The name of your computer will be on this line. The Show Client Name selection, there are three settings always off or on hover. And I recommend the on hover setting. What the on hover does, when you hover the cursor over the mirror display, this line shows at the top and it has the client name on it, but it also has a lot of controls on it that we will be discussing later. You can set it to never, and then it doesn't show that line when you hover over it. But of course, now you don't have those settings available easily. And you can set it to always and then it'll always show whether or not you're hovering. Don't worry if if it's there or not when you're recording because the Reflector 3 record function does not record that line. If you were using a screen recorder of course and that line were visible it would record. You should set always on top and when it's set if you try to move another window across the mirror display the mirror display will stay on top. Normally in Windows, if you move a window like that over another one, it would cover it. But if you set that on, always on top option, it'll stay on top. On Startup, show Quick Connect window. That uses software called the Air Parrot to let you easily start the mirroring process. It's a little more trouble than it's worth. It, it's, it's pretty quick to start mirroring as we showed you at the beginning of this video, so I would recommend you not check it. On connection, airplay resolution, that's your monitor resolution. That's the default setting and I recommend you use it. Default scale, best for high DPI. I'm not 100% sure what some of the others do, but I find that this one works consistently with all the different features of Reflector 3. Airplay security, none. If you activate airplay, airplay security, it's an extra level of security for when you're starting this thing up. It's a time waster. On connection, connect and show device. That's a reasonable thing to do. Why would you want to hide it? The reason you turn the program on is because you want to use the mirror display. Prompt to approve. Again, that's just a time waster. Don't, don't check that. Use this one. Show frame automatically. When that is checked, you will see the frame around your device with any buttons that happen to be there, and it looks realistic. If you turn it off, you'll see a rectangle there. It does not look realistic, so I recommend you use the automatically. Display full screen. I don't know what it's supposed to do, but it causes severe problems when I check it on my system. So I recommend you don't. And I believe these settings are for that, and since you're not using that feature, it doesn't matter what you do here. Now just in case I made any changes there, I'll go ahead and apply it, and then I'll go to recording. Best for single device is what you use if you're recording a single device. If you were, for instance, recording both an iPad and an iPhone, you would select all connected devices. I don't know what the others do, so don't worry about them. Record frames per second. I use 30. I believe it is the default. Recording background 
choose a color that's fairly pleasing. When you're recording with Reflector 3, it will put a rectangle around the image you're recording, and that rectangle will have this color. If you don't choose that color, and you, for instance, chose black, it, it doesn't look very pleasing. So pick a color you like the looks of. You can try a recording, play it, and see what it looks like to pick a color that, that you like. Recording quality high. Unless you're, say, running out of time or something on your computer, you have a very slow computer, I would certainly recommend you just select high. And the recordings will come out with a fine, nice quality, nice and sharp. It will show apply if you have made a change on the page. If you haven't made a change on the page, it, uh, apply is grayed out like this and isn't checkable. So we know we haven't made any changes on this page. So go to network. I don't make any changes on this page. Advanced and the logging level normal. I'm not quite sure what that does. Airplay enabled. That's how you're doing the mirroring. So you definitely want that enabled. You're not using either Google Cast or, or Miracast, so disable those. It'll ease the burden on your computer CPU. Launch at login. Unless you want Reflector 3 to start up whenever you start your computer, don't check that one. And use Classic Renderer. That has to do with how it renders the recordings you make. If you're not having any trouble with the recorded videos that you uh, make with Reflector 3, don't check use classic render. If you are having trouble with some of the recordings with the way they look, try using classic render. It might help. Include control window and automatic layout. You change the size of parts of your mirror display, as we'll discuss later. If you check this, it will move the control window so it doesn't get overwritten if another window gets larger. Try it both ways and see whether or not you want to check it. You will find that the automatic feature will move it out to make room for bigger displays, but it won't move it back if you change those displays back to a smaller size. So that's the settings I recommend for initializing uh, Reflector 3. And again, it remembers those settings, so you only have to do that the first time you use it. If you've made any changes or you're not sure if you made any changes when, you, when you're on the last one, go ahead and click OK. It'll put all the changes in and it will get rid of that window. Now, as to how to record, and I did mention earlier that I really recommend you use a screen recorder to record because it gives you much more control of what your recording will look like. But if you want to use the Reflector 3 record function, here's how you do it. Before you start any recordings, decide whether or not you're going to use your microphone on your computer to narrate the recordings. To use the microphone on your computer, you'll click this symbol here, this this faded microphone. Click it once to activate it, but make sure you've selected the correct microphone by clicking the carrot. We're only mirroring the iPhone 11. If we just want to record that mirror display, you can do it two ways. You can hover over the display and click the red record button, or you can re click record all, and, and the all is just the iPhone 11 display. While it is recording, and it shows that by that symbol and this timer, while it is recording, it will record everything you do on the iPhone. If you change screens, if you open apps, I recommend you not try to record a playing video on the iPhone. That will cause problems. But you can open apps, you can explain them, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish by recording your, your uh, display. Now when you're finished recording, you can either click stop on the control window or you can hover and click the button again to stop it. Or you can click the X that appears when you hover over the iPhone line on the window and it will stop mirroring and but it'll also I believe ask you whether or not you want to save the recording. It is formatting the recording, and then if I wait, waited for it to format the recording, it would ask me where I want to save it. So there's all those ways to save a recording. When I click the X here, not only is it going to save the recording, but it has also terminated mirroring. You can also, on the, on the line above the 
mirror display, you can click the camera to take a snapshot of the uh, mirror display. Or you can click this X here to terminate mirroring to this device. Now there are some options you can set here. So let's look at, at what those are. You can select this one. Those are skins you can select. A skin will make the outline here look different. There will be some artistic renditions showing uh, different things surrounding the uh, iPhone. And if you had downloaded any of those, you could select which one you wanted to use here. I, I only have the one that comes with Reflector 3, so there's no choices here that do anything. You can show or hide the frame by clicking Alt-B. So let's demonstrate that. That's what it looks like when you turn the frame off. Let's go through the rest of the options that appear when you click this gear wheel on, on the mirror display. So the scale, again, is the same as we selected over here, best for high DPI. I would suggest you leave that. Forced rotation, if you have it on automatic orientation and the iPhone lets you rotate its display by turning the iPhone, image of the display will also rotate. It, it depends on what you're doing on the phone, whether or not your uh, iPhone will rotate. So I'm, I'm on the main screen now, on the home screen. It doesn't rotate there. On some of the apps, if you have them open and you rotate your device, the, the image will rotate on, on your display. I'm, I'm on the note page. So apparently the note page, it will rotate. And of course, you can lock rotation on the iPhone. But I don't have it locked. I have it automatic. So when you lo rotate, the display rotates. Now, other options here are you can force it to left. Then it'll st the iPad will stay this direction no matter what you do on the iPad. Now, if the display rotates, it'll rotate, but the picture of the image won't rotate. So when I rotate it now, it does this, but the way it's shown on the screen doesn't change. The other options are pretty obvious. Uh, we have... We can force it to just turn it over the other way, or you can force it to be portrait right side up or portrait upside down. And again, if the display on the iPhone itself rotates, it'll rotate on the picture, but the frame won't rotate if you have it forced. Always on top, it is set to on, so that if I try to move another window on top of that one, the mirror image will stay on top. Display full screen again, that caused severe problems on my system. Don't check that. Disconnect device will stop mirroring for this device, and if you want to resume, you'd have to start it again. You can mirror more than one device at a time. For instance, I have an iPad 2. If I start mirroring on it, they'll both show up on the screen, and normally, if it's hidden the control window and, and and of course I can move this off. If I had left this set on moving it automatically, it would have moved everything around so that it would all still show. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this display. It's taking up too much room while I uh, discuss the rest. In fact, I'll just hide that display. I'll leave it on. We've covered all the options on here. Of course, this is from the window that I have being displayed on the uh, iPhone. Now let's look at a few more features. We can change the size of the different displays, and, and I'll turn this one back on. You can change the size of the different displays by clicking the symbol here. So here's the iPad, click it. Got bigger, smaller. You can do the same on the iPhone. Doesn't get a lot bigger. And notice I forgot to auto lock the iPad, so it's time, the screen's timed out, so it's black now. Before you start playing with the recording and the mirroring, disable the auto lock like we showed you at the beginning. And I haven't done that on the uh, iPad. Now again, you can change the size of the display by clicking this, this symbol here on the line for that device, if you're showing more than one device. Now again, this will stop mirroring for the iPhone. This will stop mirroring for the iPad. You can also record your webcam at the same time as you're recording everything else, and you do that by clicking this symbol here. Now I have a webcam, an iPad, and an iPhone all being 
displayed at the same time. They all have control windows at the top. I can start and stop recording of the webcam, iPad, or iPhone separately, or I can start them all and stop them all here. It will occasionally get scrambled if you uh, play too many games with the different displays. So you, you just have to get used to that, I'm afraid. Now remember, if you simply stop recording, you're not going to stop mirroring at the same time. It'll keep mirroring. And if you stop recording by clicking the red buttons, again, it won't stop mirroring. But that will stop mirroring and recording, as will that, as will that, for one device. I'll save this one because you'll see what it looks like when all three are being recorded. This is the sample recording. I will take individual snapshots so we can see what that does. Let's, let's use the snapshot feature on the iPhone. It asks, where do you want to save it, what name? And it's going to save them all probably with the same name, so we're going to have to change the names as we go. Here's one of the sample snapshots. One warning, you're going to run into trouble if you tried to record one of these devices while you're actually showing a video on it, either the iPhone or the iPad. Of course, this is a video. Here it's recording. As you'll see if I wave my hand in front of my webcam. Just a, as a recap, this will show and hide the display. It won't affect the recording if it happens to be recording. It'll just show and hide, show and hide, show and hide. But it won't terminate recording and it won't stop mirroring. This, on the other hand, will terminate recording and stop mirroring for that device, that device, or that device. And up here, that will stop recording and terminate mirroring. That will just stop recording on, on the different devices. And this will start and stop recording on all devices. Uh, I'm not recording anything now. If I click that, it'll start recording everything on one picture. If I click it again, it'll stop recording. And lastly, I'll demonstrate. If I click this, it'll, dim it'll disconnect this guy and stop mirroring him. Just the iPhone. So that's it. That's a complete description of all the features in the Reflector 3 for when you're recording with Reflector 3. Now this video gave a full description of all the features of Reflector 3. And if you want a partial, quick, quick and dirty description of just enough to use Reflector 3, go ahead and watch the Quick Start Guide, which is in the same playlist with this video. And if you want to watch the two videos later, open either the iPhone or the iPad playlist and there is a link to those playlists at the end of this video and in the video description for this video. If you enjoyed this Tom's Tech Notes video, please like it and please leave a comment. To watch my other videos or to read many computer help articles, please visit my YouTube channel or my website. You can also click links in the video description. When thumbnails appear, click at upper left to watch playlist iPhone. Click at lower left to watch playlist iPad. Click my photo to visit the Tom's Tech Notes channel. To subscribe, please click the red button. If you don't see the red button, hover over my photo to show it.